All right, kia ora team. Uh, we're into our second video. This one is on rounding and compensating um, for addition and subtraction in maths. Uh, we are actually into school holidays here in New Zealand. It's not that makes a big difference at the moment um, as we are in lockdown. I hope uh, people are enjoying this lovely break in the weather that we're having. It's primo out there. hope people are getting out, getting some exercise in. And if you're watching these videos, you're obviously getting a little bit of learning in as well. Um, all right, so let's crank into this. So the first thing that we're going to be looking at is rounding and compensating for basic easy addition. Um, I'm just going to click open into this and just get rid of this bad boy there. Now you can see I've put this um, into a word problem again. So the word problem here is we've got Tracy and Beth collecting teddies to place in their windows. Very popular at the moment. Uh, Tracy had 27 and Beth had 36. Very healthy uh, teddy collections. And the question is asking how many did they have in total? Now again, um, I've highlighted the key information. Whenever we're doing a word problem, we need to read it, find out what the question is asking us and identify that key information. So we've got 27, 36, and how many did they have in total? So I know that I'm adding those two numbers together and I'm, we're going to make um, a total and addition problem. Now with rounding and compensating, um, you might think of this as almost making tidy numbers. So I've got my 27 and my 36 is going to make my answer. Now 27 is not a tidy number, but it is close to one. Now a tidy number is basically any number that ends in a 5 or a 0. Um, any, any number, 10, 20, 30, 40, 100, 170, 330, they all end with zeros. They're really easy numbers to work with. Now, I need to make sure when I'm doing addition that I keep the total number of objects, in this case, teddies, the same. Otherwise, my answer isn't going to be correct. So when I round this number up to 30, I add 3. I need to take away that 3 from the other side. So my 27 by adding 3 becomes 30, and my 36 by taking away 3 becomes 33. Now I have two numbers that are much easier to work with, and I can just do my 30 plus my 30 plus my 3 gives me my final answer of 63. Pretty straightforward. Um, I'm taking this number, turning it into a tidy number, making sure I'm keeping the total number of objects the same. By if I'm adding 3 to this side, I need to subtract that from this side. 30, 33, 30, plus 30, plus 3, makes my total of 63. Awesome. Now, our next example for rounding and compensating for addition is a slightly harder question. Um, I haven't done it in a word problem, um, just because I wanted to crank through it quite quickly. So this time we've got 158 plus 244. And I'm actually, when I look at this question, the first strategy that jumps into my mind is going to be uh, place value partitioning. But before I do place value partitioning, I'm going to use rounding and compensating to make it a little bit more straightforward when I get to that stage. So again, I've got my 158. That's close to a tidy number. So I want to turn it into something that ends with a zero. The closest number for that is 160. So I add two over to this side to my 158 to make it 160, which means I have to take away the two on this side to make sure I still have the same total in overall. So my 244 becomes 242. Now I've got 160 plus 242. This is when I might switch into place value partitioning. Again, I find place value partitioning is a really easy strategy to um, move from a written where I'm doing working to actually a mental strategy that I can do in my brain. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do there is switch into place value partitioning. So I need to identify my place value columns first. So in my 160, I'm using the red to identify my 100. So I've got 100 here and 200 here, 100 and 200. I'm using this color here to identify my 10s. So I've got a 60 and I've got a 40 and my yellow for my ones. So I've got zero ones there and I've got two over here. Now it's a matter of adding those up. So my 100 and 200 makes 300, 60 and 40 makes 100. Again, I know that because six and four makes 10, adding on an extra zero for the different place value column. And then zero and two makes two. Now, when I add those together, 
300, 400, 402, which means my final answer has to be 402. So again, with a harder question like this, I could go straight for place value partitioning, but I've chosen here to do a little bit of rounding and compensating first to turn that into an easier version of place value partitioning when I get there. Awesome team, so now we're going to be looking at rounding and compensating for subtraction. Um, so I've got a question here. Maya and Malachi had a challenge to do 50 star jumps. It took Maya 72 seconds and Malachi 56 seconds. How much faster was Malachi? Now again, I've highlighted the key information from this word problem. So I've got the numbers 56, I've got the number 72, and how much faster? That sentence there, how much faster was Malachi, shows to me that there is a, we're looking for the difference between two numbers. One is bigger than the other, and we want to find out how much bigger, what is the difference between them. <clears throat> so that means that it is definitely going to be a subtraction problem. Now I could do this by adding up actually from 56 to 72, um, what is the, the gap that way. But I'm going to choose to do this as a subtraction problem. So 72, take away 56 is going to leave me with my difference. Now, uh, how subtraction rounding and compensating varies from addition is that I need to keep that difference, that gap between the two numbers, exactly the same. The way I do that is whatever I do to one side of my equation, I do to the other side. If I was to add to here and take away from this side, I am changing that, def that difference or that gap between those two numbers, and I need it to be the same. So what I do is I do exactly the same on both sides of the equation. So here I've got 72, and I'm going to turn that into a round number or a tidy number of 70. And to do that, I'm going to take away 2. That means I'm also going to take away 2 from 56 to give me 54. Now. Once my equation is turned into 70 take away 54, I may be able to solve that um, using basic facts. I may know that that is just going to add up to 16, and 16 is going to be my final answer. However, I may choose to do it um, as a number line. This is another strategy where I may know that to get from 70 to 60 is going to be a difference of 10, and then from 60 to 54 is a difference of 6, which overall gives me a difference of 16. And 16 up here as well, obviously. Now, if my difference of 70 to 54 is 16, that means that my difference of 72 and 56 is also 16. So just to recap really quickly, the main difference here is with rounding and compensating for subtraction, I need to keep my difference the same. So whatever I do to one side, I do to both sides. All right, team, so uh, the last thing that um, I just wanted to run over was um, just some independent follow-up work, uh, just to practice that rounding and compensating and also any other addition and subtraction strategies that um, may be really awesome for your learning. So I've just opened up a new tab here, and I'm just going to go in, and I'm just going to Google rounding and compensating. Um, and that is going to take me to uh, this web page here, or this Google search results here. This first one here, NZ Maths, amazing website. If you click on this one, solve addition and subtraction problems by compensating. And then you roll down to the second one here, addition and subtraction strategies. There are awesome, awesome stuff on here, by the way. All of these activities are really cool, but I want you to have a look at this one. Just letting you know this is a level three. Um, so that's traditionally year five, six, but um, you may be younger than that and able to do these and you may be older. There's actually quite a bit of um, range that you can work through on here. So we click on this one and it goes through the achievement objectives that you're going to be working through. But the key thing I want you to do is scroll right down to this add sub practice sheet here. Um, when you click on that, it's going to take you to this um, activity or worksheet here. There's actually seven pages. It's quite a lot, but um, you've probably got quite a lot of time at your sleeve anyway. Um, there is a whole lot of stuff in here. So there is some stuff around um, number lines. Um, don't subtract add. So that's turning subtraction problems into addition problems by adding up. 
using tidy numbers, rounding and compensating is another name for that, um, and a whole lot of activities on here which are really, really cool. Um, again, you can start looking at things like decimals if you want to have um, a bit of an extension, and there are the answers down there if you, um, when you're done to check where you're at. Um, I hope you've really enjoyed this video. Um, my next one's actually going to be around coding um, and incorporating the new digital curriculum from home and what you can do around that. Um, thanks for watching, team. If you do like the videos, I am starting a YouTube channel. Hopefully I can get these up there. Subscribe. You can get the, the updates and the videos as they come up. And you can also send me any requests of stuff that you want covered. I'm happy to do whatever. All right, have an awesome day and enjoy. Cheers, team.